bunch of books. I don't know how many of it. Probably was maybe like five or six books. A diaper. And then I saw a letter like rolled up. Oh my god like i can't have anything like i can't have nothing to myself you're going to my apartment complex now you're going to my fucking doctor's office like what 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 is going on like i felt tortured really at this point because like i wasn't doing anything to her because he took a picture of how she was exactly this is how my mom looked as she was sitting in the laundry room at the hotel no shoes on ass out hair is I don't know, it was crazy. He ended up saying something to my mom and whenever my mom noticed that it was him, she ran off. He followed her to where she was going and she ended up opening the door to the back of a Chinese restaurant and went into, into the kitchen and was just screaming like, oh, he's trying to kill me, he's trying to kill me. Fuck him too. I'm at a locker's toy. So y'all probably wouldn't care that I'm calling to tell you I'm in the hospital. Something's wrong with you. You need to check yourself. You need to go get yourself checked out. As a matter of fact, bring my mama with you. Nah, nah what, I what I can do, do, do is, 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 is call PCS, PCS to do a welfare, welfare check. Do you want to do that? Anytime you see a black woman running away from a black man, that shit ain't gonna fucking look right. And so they believe her mom. They truly believed her. And so he ended up walking to the front of the restaurant and it was like where is she you know i'm not trying to hurt her she is on parole she's mentally unstable and i'm really really just trying to get her some help they didn't believe anything that he was saying and um eventually um she ends up going back out of the back door because at this time he was in the front they wouldn't allow him obviously in the kitchen where she was um it's crazy but they ended up letting her go and so by the time he discovered that she was completely gone and not in there anymore he could no longer find out where she was so after this happened he called me um he was just like um you come here meet me up here um because i don't know where your mom is she just ran off and um got these people looking at me like i'm crazy you know when i'm not they don't even know what's going on so me and gabe got in a car and we met him it's hot as hell middle of May <laughs> I'm hot I'm not much pregnant and it's just oh my god a hot ass mess we arrived to the hotel because that's where his car was still parked even though he was walking on the other side of the building to the other place or whatever his car was still parked to the hotel so we parked by the hotel to where his car was and um, he was telling me how the people in the hotel was trying to figure out what was going on um, and he asked him he was like do you this do you guys know who this person is? You know, this person is just hanging out in your washroom. Like, does she have a room here? Anything like that? And they were just like, no. Um, she told us that her name was Katrina. Y'all know damn well that's not my mama's name. But it was like, she told them her name was Katrina and that she just needed some fresh air. So they allowed it or whatever. And they allowed it. So she ended up leaving some things there in the washer it's like she was storing things like she wasn't washing clothes but she had like whatever bag she had with her she left it in the washer i didn't i don't really remember what was in it um because we didn't take it but that's what white boy ended up telling us that he saw whenever we got there so uh, white boy decided to call the cops just to see if they could perhaps find out if she was still in the chinese restaurant or she was somewhere else in the area. So he called, um, they eventually came. They, were, they didn't come right away, but they didn't, didn't take them that long. So he came and the officer, we ran down to him what was going on. Um, I believe he checked to see if she had any warrants out for her parole or anything like that because at this time she was no longer following up with her parole officer because y'all know she had to see her every week. All of that stopped once she started acting this way. Um, but she didn't have any outstanding warrants or anything like that. But he did assist us in going into the place of business, which was the Chinese restaurant that she went in the back door of trying to run away from white boy. And so he, the officer, and I followed him as well. We were all following the officer. So the officer went into the Chinese restaurant. We were right behind him. 
and he asked them, he was like, hey, do y'all mind if I go in the back to see if this person is here? You know, my mom. And it was like, yeah, it's okay, go ahead. And it was like, acting like they wasn't just holding her hostage or whatever, believing her bullshit. But you know, they didn't know, so I can't really blame them. So the officer went in the back, he checked everything in the, in the kitchen, all of that. She was nowhere to be found. So they said they didn't know where she went. She just left and he was like, okay, cool. So we walked out. And the, we even looked in the bushes. They had like a, a little mini, little mini woods, mini bushes with trees, whatever you want to call it in the back of the restaurant. She wasn't there either. Uh, we even looked, looked in dumpsters. Like <laughs> we was looking everywhere. Um, couldn't find her so the officer eventually was just telling us like hey it's not much i can do you know she doesn't have any warrants anything so it's not really that much of a um, urgency for us um, however if you guys want to y'all can always go down to the station to see if you can fill out or file for a mental health warrant um but they had circumstances surrounding that as well like we had to basically prove that she had some type of medical condition but we couldn't because she never really, that we know of, she was never really fully um, diagnosed with anything that we know of. Um, I know she was diagnosed with depression, but other than that, that was it. But we knew it was more than just depression, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure y'all know it, so it was more than just depression. But I was just like, okay, we might try to do that, but I didn't feel like it was a necessity because I thought it was going to be really a waste of time to do that, honestly. So um he wrote a report you know just to jot it down and he left and so we were now back at square fucking one so the next day i was like you know what i'm gonna go to her parole office to talk to her parole officer because i have been calling her as well that previous day and probably even before that um, but I like it's so hard to get in touch with these people. It's like so hard. So I called and um, Couldn't get an answer. So I was like, you know, what? let's just go and see if we can talk to her in person So me my grandma my aunt and white boy we end up going um, Gabe stayed at the house I believe but we ended up going to the parole office and immediately as soon as we went there, they already really wasn't trying to help us. They're like, do you have an appointment? And we're like, no, like, you know, we ain't on parole. We are we're trying to talk to a parole officer about your parolee, you know what I'm saying? And um, they was like, okay, well, I'll see if she um, has any openings. I'll see if she's available. So we waited, we waited, we waited. Then <sighs> time flew by. <laughs> Well, not flew by, bitch, because it was a long ass time. But time went by, like hours. We probably was there because we went there early in that, that morning because we thought, we figured by going early in the morning that we would have a better chance in um, reaching the lady or re reaching the parole officer. So, um, white boy, after hours went by, white boy ended up going to the window again to try to see what was going on and if they were able to reach out to the parole officer to let her know that we wanted to talk to her. Um, she's like, oh, well, she's at lunch. Okay, so when she's gonna be coming back from lunch, she's like, oh, two o'clock. So we wait till two o'clock. Um, I think we probably left to get something to eat. I can't even remember. I'm pretty sure we did because I was pregnant and you know, you know. <laughs> two o'clock came, still nothing. They're like, oh, she's still at lunch. So I think she eventually came off of lunch or came back from lunch at maybe around almost three o'clock. And so, by the time we saw her, it was like almost time for her to even leave. So she finally came out because she wasn't trying to see us at all whatsoever. But we stayed there. We demanded to see her. We were just like, it's really important. It's really, really urgent. Like, we really need to talk to her. So she came out. Um, she didn't let us go in there. She came out. <laughs> and um, she was, uh, we were just telling her what was going on. And she was, um, we were like, we don't know what to do. She's not saying what she's supposed to say at this point. And we're pretty sure she's in violation of her parole because she's not staying with her daughter anymore. She's just really out on the streets at this point. The parole officer, she was just like, yeah, weird call from her. She was basically just cursing her out, telling her, I, I don't know exactly what she told her. I'm not even gonna word for word it. But um, she went off on her parole officer as well for whatever reason, I don't know. And I thought that was pretty weird, like, okay, clearly you see that 
if a person, uh, if a parolee is going to go off on their own parole officer, like something is not right. You know what I'm saying? Um, but she didn't really seem bothered by it. So we're just like, what can we do to find her? Or what can we do to make sure that, you know, we do something? And she was like, basically at this point, we can't do anything. Um, we can't issue a warrant right away either. Um, cause those things take time being that she is a transfer. And I'm just like, what the fuck you mean that takes time? So basically what she was trying to say is that being the online transfer her parole from Louisiana to Texas, in order for her to put a warrant out for her, she had to go to the Louisiana Parole Board or talk to them or email them, whatever it is, it is the process. And she was like, that process could take months. And I'm just like, that doesn't fucking make sense. So you're basically telling me if you have a serial killer or whatever on parole, and they end up transferring to another state um and then they end up killing again she was like hey look this is what y'all have to do y'all have to write a letter everybody could write letters about what's going on um y'all side of the story why you feel that she needs this um parole revoked and i can send it to the louisiana board uh parole or parole board and we can just go from there i ain't gonna lie i didn't want to fucking write no letter because i felt like it was pointless um I really did, but my grandma agreed, and I was like, okay, fuck it, I'll write a little something, something. So I wrote a little something, something, um, and that was that. And <laughs> we gave it to her, and she was like, okay, I'll be in contact, lying like a motherfucker. But that whole thing, like her, my mom being on parole, just it was pointless because her parole officer wouldn't even do anything, and I've never heard of that ever in my life, like. I know parole is different than probation. Probation is a little more lenient than parole. So I figured that they would do something, but they did not. Like, she didn't care that she was out of the street. She didn't care that she was violating her parole. She was just like, well, there's nothing I could do right now. Like, there's nothing I could do. Like, she just really kept saying there's nothing I could do right now. So once again, a fail of us trying to get my mom some help. It doesn't work out. So the next morning i wake up to a facebook message from my mom now i had her blocked initially but she ended up making another facebook page or whatever for whatever reason and she said this So basically she had in her mind that she was dating a Rockets player. Um, and I don't I don't really know what her purpose was for this. I don't know if she thought that this was gonna be a reason for me to talk to her or for me to, I don't, I don't know what it was. Um, but whatever it was, I'm just like, I know damn well she's not dating a Rockets player because she was, she wouldn't be homeless. She wouldn't be on feet with no shoes. Like I already knew. But it was it was really disturbing to me. Um, I don't have the message in front of me because it's in my other phone, so I can't look at it as I'm recording this. But as y'all can see my response, I just basically told her just stop talking to me, um, like leave me alone. Like I really, really just wanted her to honestly leave me alone at this point. She had put a bunch of thumbs up signs. She like you are serious. Um, I was dead ass. So after I said that, I ended up blocking her. At, once I did that, she also sent me a text from, I don't know if this is someone else's phone or if it was one of the fake numbers, but I'll go ahead and show y'all. The first text, y'all see my mom shows her feet kick back while she's watching the Rockets play game. And I only know that because I can see the, the scoreboard and it says Houston. <laughs> um, and then next, she starts sending me pictures of herself smiling, which I felt was really really disturbing um underneath she says deuces you dumbass bitch now i didn't say anything to her um prior to this so i wasn't really sure where this energy was coming from while she was calling me out of my name while she was really being really belligerent with me um so i decided to reply and i said you are sick stop texting my phone you will be served with some paper soon you're only giving me more proof that you are harassing me after i told you to stop contacting me i said at but i meant are 
Um, so she did that, and then that same night she texted me from another number, blank, which is my grandma's name. I'm gonna exit. I'm gonna mark that out. But my grandma or your grandma, we're just gonna say that trained that red hoe well talking about me. Uh, she would always call me a red hoe for some reason. Um, LOL, LOL, LOL. And by the way, I already talked to the police about filing charges on that asshole white boy. Whatever the fuck that bitch name is, I'll be happy to forward you a copy of the report. But I've been warned. And I guess she's talking about I've been warned because of my Facebook message. Um, because I ended up sending her a picture of herself um, in the Facebook, as y'all can probably see, um, I think. And she sends me the same picture back in this message. Um, then I reply back and I said, stop texting me. I put my mom, in, I put my mom full name after that. Um, and then she said, stop being a pussy, Adoria, before Mr. Can start beating that ass. Now, she meant to say Mr. Gabe. They would always call my husband Mr. Gabe. I don't know. They just call him Mr. Gabe. So that's what she meant um, before, Miss, before my husband, well, my boyfriend at the time, but she meant before he started beating my ass and I felt like that was really offensive because like why would you say that like why would you tell your daughter stop being a pussy before their boyfriend starts beating their ass like like what type of shit is that like I, like what you knowing like my mom knew I had got out of an abusive relationship right before him so I really thought that was really low for her but you know whatever so I replied back and I said, leave me alone, you're harassing me. Um, she sent me a screenshot of this quote or um, this scripture in the Bible saying, honor your father and your mother so that you may live long. She said, once again, leave me alone, Maisha. And she says, in three translations, because you dumb and blind, Lord, my poor babies are in trouble, good night. And I'm assuming she was talking about her grandchildren, which is my daughters and my son. Um, I don't know. And then I said, leave my children out of it. You'll never see them ever again. Stop texting my phone. You're making it worse on yourself right now. Which she in fact was because she was giving giving me proof because at this time and if and I'm gonna just go back real quick and one of the messages I said um, you'll be served with paper soon and I meant a restraining order because had y'all known in the past whenever we got in that fight the first time back in 2016 um, I decided that I wanted to file a restraining order against her but unfortunately I couldn't because she didn't have an address so um at this time I knew she still didn't have an address but I'm like okay eventually she's gonna be arrested so I'll be able to do it I knew at this point I wanted to have a restraining order against my mom because she had been popping up at my house leaving notes going to my leasing office going to my doctor office leaving me threatening messages and the only thing that I was trying to do was just simply get her some mental help um, so yeah, at this point I decided I wanted to follow a certain order, but it didn't happen just yet. Um, we'll get to that point eventually, but I just knew I couldn't do it anymore. And I remember also, um, she called me from a random number and I didn't know that it was her. Um, I eventually stopped answering random numbers because I knew it probably was her, but at this point I didn't. So I answered the phone and my mom was just talking. Like she was just talking as if everything was okay to me. She was just like, yeah, girl, I'm in a um, new traverse. Um, I'm I'm chilling with the Rockets and the Saints. You know, it's the Saints football team or whatever. She's like, I'm chilling with the players of the Rockets and the Saints, and um, they got me a new car and I got a new house or I, I got I got a condo, something like that. She said, um, and she was just rambling on about what she had, and I knew it was untruthful because she was homeless. She was still on foot at this point, but I guess she felt like that was gonna make me feel like she was doing her own thing or like you know oh, i don't need y'all i'm with the rockets i'm with the saints but i knew better than that i knew she wasn't but for whatever reason in her mind she made it up in her mind as if she was as if she was actually dating a rockets player and that was really really disturbing to me because i never known my mom to really just literally make up something that i knew wasn't real you know um and the whole making up scenarios in her mind that gets worse <laughs> as the story goes on um, but that was one of the first times that she she made up something that as you know um well no i'm lying that wasn't the first time um a couple story times ago i talked about how my mom lied and said she had lupus 
for some reason in her mind she thought she may have lupus and um that was even disturbing to me you sent me a picture of a rockets player and then you pretended to be his his boo i don't even know the name of this rockets player maybe y'all could tell me about the screenshots but i don't I don't know who this Rockets player is. <laughs> I don't know his name. I don't know nothing. I don't know this man. I wouldn't know this man if I see him on the streets. But after that occurred, y'all, threats didn't stop. The harassment didn't stop. In fact, it got worse, you know? Um, well, you don't know. You're going to find out <laughs> soon. Um, but it got worse. And um, we're just going to stop right here because it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a whole lot. I'm gonna stop right there, but I will give you guys a hint because uh, I've already titled the next story time. My mom starts selling her body. <laughs> she starts selling her body. She, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna say anything further. Um, but like I said, three gets worse and texts and threats and everything. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below because y'all don't wanna miss. Y'all don't wanna miss it, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> y'all don't wanna miss it. Stick around and y'all will see <laughs> what this will be next week. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace.